Ah, oh, God's glorious day, my beloveds. Happy 4th of July. Happy Freedom Day. Happy birthday to the grand experiment. Happy 245th birthday to the United States of America. My beloveds, as I was preparing for this talk, and by the way, I have my, I call my happy dress. I always feel like this dress reminds me of fireworks. So I'm wearing my happy 4th of July. It's my happy dress. So I decided to wear my happy dress because my beloveds, I am choosing to be happy on this 4th of July, America's birthday. I have a choice, my beloveds. With everything going on in this country, it is very easy to choose sadness. And yet, as a metaphysician, as a ministerial student, as a practitioner of the science of mind, I am choosing happiness in the midst of grave circumstances. Today is the 200th and 45th birthday of the United States. 245 years of this grand experiment in democracy. 245 years of this experiment in personal liberation. 245 years in an experiment of cultural, racial, political, global diversity. The first nation on earth to come together like a supernova, chaotic beginning with all types of people, some free, some enslaved, some indigenous, many from many countries in the world. And I am here to say, as a metaphysician, we are doing a, a great job at the experiment. So I have been, the thought is bouleversé, I have been in shock over the decision of the Supreme Court. And what is uh, very interesting is that I am both pro-life and pro-choice. I am both my beloveds because God creates life. It's so mysterious, it's so beautiful, it's so wonderful. A new baby, a cell, an embryo, I can't create it. All of our minds together, all of the great minds together cannot create even the petal of a flower or an embryo. So yes, it is a life, yes, it is mysterious, yes, it is of God, and yes, God has given us all free will. If God has given us free will, how can we then try to impose our will on others? We try, I try, I try all the time. But thank goodness, the infinite one has given us free will. And so as I observe the machinations of my brothers and sisters on the planet, I know the truth. That there is only one power and one presence in the cosmos, in the universe, and I as a unlimited spiritual being can choose oneness, dominion, spiritual wisdom, spiritual awakening in union with the one presence. So this is what I'm choosing. As I was meditating on this talk, I heard we must trust in God. And then suddenly God gave me, in God we trust. In God we trust. In God we trust is on every single dollar, US dollar in this country. And as I begin to, began to do research, the divine is so profound. This month marks 
the 66th anniversary of In God We Trust becoming the national motto of the United States. Eisenhower, in 1956, on July 30th, and the 84th Congress passed into legislation that In God We Trust would become the national motto of this country. E Pluribus Unum had been the de facto motto. The founding fathers on July 4th of 1776 sat together, all debating what should be the motto of this country. Jefferson wanted it to be something philosophical, maybe based from Plato or Aristotle. John Quincy Adam wanted it to be religious and based in the Hebrew Bible and Torah. They argued and argued and argued. And they decided not to make an official motto, but to put E Pluribus Unum on a plaque that can be found in Philadelphia. Out of one, many. Many out of one, I'm switching it around. Many out of oneness, oneness. So I call this the metaphysical spiritual shadow motto of the United States, oneness. And in 1956, during the, cold, the height of the Cold War, where America saw itself in opposition to the USSR and communism, Eisenhower, who had been very, very close friends with Billy Graham, decided to push for a more religious motto. Many, many, many people were against it. The United States is founded on this idea of separation between state and religion. And so many conservatives and liberals and independents saw it as going backwards into a more, to the, to the dark ages, where science and secularism would no longer be valued. And yet he pushed. And by July 29th, on that eve, many had changed their minds. Many began, many of the congressmen and representatives began to, began to see that this was more, it was no longer religious, but it was philosophical. I believe they began to download the higher vibration of this statement. The metaphysical transcendent universal vibration of this statement in God we trust. So my beloveds, years ago, Reverend Carlos, who I consider a mentor, mentioned that when you are out in the world, going about your daily activities, purchasing things, paying for things, turn your money over and make sure that the side that says in God we trust is facing you. I held on to that. I believe in prosperity consciousness. He said this will make you, will help you to anchor your prosperity consciousness and you make the statement. So before I pay for something, I go in God, I trust for my prosperity, knowing that more returns to me in the here and now. So it became a mantra for me. And as I was meditating, I said, with everything going on, what must we do? We must trust. And spirit said, in God, we trust. A dollar bill showed up. My beloved, how much are you trusting God in your life? This is a principle, a universal principle that must be practiced daily. Proverbs 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. My beloveds, with everything going on, the violence, <laughs> laws being changed right in front of our eyes, 
a changing America, COVID still around, I experienced it last week. Are we truly trusting in God? And are we leaning not on our own understanding? My beloveds, I'm very analytical. I want to understand what's going on. Why? I want to control. I desire safety and security. I want to know what's going to happen next with this country and how it will affect my life as a citizen. And yet, the metaphysical, one of the greatest metaphysical texts of all times, tells us to not lean on our own understanding, but to trust in God with all of our heart. Metaphysically, the heart means consciousness. Trust in God with all of your consciousness. My beloved, when my mother was diagnosed with COVID, I wasn't trusting in God and leaning on, my, on, on God's understanding. I was in horror. My mother is a woman who has comorbidities. I've always been the opposite. I was the one eating broccoli instead of fried plantain. But my mother was wonderful. She'd make the broccoli <laughs> for me. I was very worried. Many African descended people have died of COVID throughout the whole pandemic. I thought, is my mother about to be a statistic? I had no idea, my beloveds. For the first two days, I could not trust in God. I'd go into the bathroom and I would weep because I was shaking with fear and I couldn't show my mother how afraid I was. And little by little, I began to remember our principles. Knowing and understanding the laws of life are just the beginning. I must also live the truth I know. I began to use prayer, communing with God mind that will bring about health, wisdom, prosperity, and everything good. My prayer was, God, help me. Give me the strength. Please don't let my mother die. It wasn't highly metaphysical. And then it became, let your highest will be done. I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you. You've always taken care of us. No matter what happens, I trust in you. Printed on the American dollar, on all of our bills, is the statement, in God we trust. In 2011, the Congress and House of Representatives decided to go over this statement. They did not know whether they would renew this official motto or not. And yet, everyone decided and voted to keep this as the national motto. A Congress which is more secular than at any other time. Yes, there are a few religious people, but the majority of us are ethical. Ethical secularism is, is the law of the land. They said that it was a philosophical and very important statement that this society, this country was founded by forefathers that wanted all of humanity to be free. I know women weren't free, black people weren't free, yet the highest vision, the metaphysical principle enthroned in the Declaration of Independence, our universal, infinite, cosmic principles. And this statement says, of myself, I do nothing, but one with the mind of God, one with the power of God, one with the presence of God. I can do all things through God, through Christ, who strengthens me. My beloved, we are to practice unwavering faith at this time. And there were two men who literally changed the fabric of the United States. I would not even be able to be your young 
minister, your new student minister, if it were not for these men. Garrison and Douglas. William Lloyd Garrison, born in Newburyport, whose father had abandoned his family, who hardly saw his mother, but felt love from her, who had a wonderful religious education, but knew nothing about slavery, slavery knew nothing about being in the moccasins of an African-American enslaved person, and yet caught the vision, as Reverend Michael Beckwith says, he caught the vision that all human beings are created equal and divinely endowed with the rights of liberty, happiness, and every good thing. Created by the one power and the one presence. He aligned with a call on his life and began to publish through the Liberator newspaper in Boston, Massachusetts, took on the fight of slavery, said that he was willing to die so that other human beings could be free. At the time that he began his paper, Frederick Douglass was an enslaved 20-something who had been sent from his slave master to a man who was known to break slaves, to destroy their will to escape. This man would beat you to submission. Frederick Douglass had escaped many times, had been brought, brought back. He was a strong, young Black man. They didn't want to eliminate him. He was beneficial financially for the plantation. So they sent him to a brutalizer. And at 20, he was able to beat this man up practically to death. And this man never touched him again. And soon after, he escaped through the Underground Railroad to New Jersey and then Massachusetts. These two men met and together formed a pod, were able to make a quantum leap and hold the vision of an integrated United States. When Garrison first began his call, his ministry, he would begin to attend churches with free black people because at the beginning of his, of his vision, he thought that African-Americans should be given a state that where they should be free or be sent to Africa if they wanted to go. He didn't believe in an integrated America. As he began to attend church with free black people, he realized we're all children of God. And he changed his vision. He said, America needs to be an integrated America where all people get to worship and marry and be together as the children of God. One human being, my, my brothers and sisters, who had never experienced slavery himself, trusted in God, sacrificed his life, in order that this America be the America that it is today. He and Frederick Douglass created the first media blitz campaign that this country has ever known. They sent over 300 million flyers to the South. They inundated the South with pamphlets about why African Americans should be free. They were burned in efficacy. They were, their images were burned in the side, in the South. They received death threats. They were, Garrison was nearly killed many times in Boston. He had to go into hiding. A group of 25 abolitionists grew to thousands, but these were the people on the front lines. It took them 13 years to finally see the abolition of slavery on August 1st, 1834. Amazing, astounding. One man with a, with, with a passion and belief and commitment to spiritual truths that are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow brought about a tipping point 
he and Douglas as outliers had created and held the vision for the modern America that we live in today. My beloveds, they trust you in God. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the seeming apparent evils, they trusted in God and held the highest vision for this nation and brought about change through their consciousness, through their belief in the highest good for all, through seeing, through opened third eyes, the vision that God has for this country. Do not lose hope. Be in the world, but not of the world. Be not discouraged. For Jesus Christ, the master, one of the master teachers and greatest metaphysician says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Aligned with our I am presence, Eisenhower, a conservative, wanting to shift things, put a metaphysical statement on our bills, on our money. We can look down and remember as metaphysicians that our sole job in this life as ageless spiritual beings is to trust in God. We know not what is coming. Many of us will make transitions, our loved ones, dis-ease, gas that is so much. Many, many things can worry us. But our job as truth students and metaphysicians like William Lloyd Garrison, Frederick Douglass, Susan B. Anthony, who was their friend, and so many others, we, our job is to trust in God regardless of the circumstances. Happy Freedom Day, my beloved. Happy birthday to the grand experiment. I am trusting that it will all be good, no matter what it looks like right now. Happy 4th of July, and so it is.